Hi, my name is Glenn and I've been a jewellery designer for the last 20 years. I joined the School of Code so I could be part of the tech revolution I saw going on in my own industry and all around. Now I design with code. Hi, I'm George and I used to be a chef before I joined the School of Code to swap out culinary creation for coding wizardry. Hi, my name is Silvia and before joining School of Code I work as a design engineer creating components for automotive industry. Now I develop full functional soft products in a continuous improvement manner using code. Hello there, I'm Rob. I've worked in the disability sector for 10 years. I've enabled people to look after themselves and now the School of Code is enabling me to discover new opportunities of my own. And together we are for each. And our objective was to address the real world issue of reducing isolation locally. Uh, to use the quote here, uh, over the past year, we've seen how much a difference bonds between local communities can make. Our app furthers these connections between people and their local neighborhoods. This could involve uh, community notice boards or meetings or chats, games or more as examples. We also wish to incorporate WebSockets into this to allow real-time chat connections. Our breakdown of how we were going to tackle this issue was based upon our user stories, which Sylvia will touch on shortly. But they essentially boil down to a common value of connectivity. We wanted to give our members a chance to talk to one another, post notifications about community information, and to feel part of something bigger. In our market research journey, we decided to create personas in order to understand our users' needs, experiences, behaviors, and expectations. Our user stories help us to describe the desired outcome for our customer and prioritize the list of the functionality that needs to be developed. We also found that the rate of anxiety increased during pandemic time, and this focused us on promoting connectivity between people with our app. A good approach was analyzing the existing apps that are currently on the market, for example, Nextdoor or Meetup. All of us agreed that the user interface is not fully accessible and it can be really difficult to use them. We decided our MPV for the app should separate different types of communication so that important posts like events or notices weren't lost in a stream of chat conversation. We also plan to differentiate the chat area by using WebSockets. Users would experience real-time communication and it would feel like the natural place to hold conversations. In addition, we felt any notices and events created by a user should also be deletable by that user and the events page should also have a pinnable map function as this was identified as a valuable event promotion tool. Our original MVP did include image uploads across the app using Azure Blob storage containers, but one of our tripwires for additional functionality push this feature into our stretch goals. Our market research also identified the use of games within the app to connect people, but after discussion, this was felt to be of limited value compared to the other features we wanted, and that enabling people to meet up for any event, including games, virtual or otherwise, was of more value to our initial offering. Now, we're quite excited to uh, demonstrate our application for you all. Uh, we would like you to meet Nui, the app that brings you closer to me because together we do more. Now we have our landing page right here, which welcomes the user to the app for the first time. We have implemented modular CSS for the components, uh, the center of which is a big friendly login button. So we click on that. Um, the user is redirected to a login page. Uh, this uses Ortho security management platform to authorize users. Because Ortho is a highly secure API that's uh, free to set up in this scope, uh, we felt it was uh, a highly appropriate solution when factoring in business costs and consumer requirements. Um, so our users can log in and be reassured that their information is safe. The user signs in and the web page reacts accordingly. The home page is the first page of our app and is presenting a simple and clear interface that introduces the customer to the app. In the top of the page, we decided to have the name and the logo of the app. This page gives the customer the opportunity to check the latest news from his local community. If you want to announce or communicate something to your local community, you can write your message and send it directly to the list of the posts. The list of posts is connected with our backend, so in this way, 
The username and the post are stored in our database. Maybe you realize that you typed something wrong or you want to introduce something extra in your post. In this case, you can click the trash can button and your post is removed from the list. Also, if the user is interested about a particular post, he can click the read more button in order to see the entire content of the post. The read more button will pop up if the post hits a certain number of characters. This is the user's profile page. It automatically uses profile pictures brought in from the AuthO login. It also allows you to add information to your bio, as much or as little as you like. The Save button echoes back what the user has typed in as confirmation. For our chat page, we incorporated the use of SignalUp, a web socket that allows our users to connect and chat in real time. We chose to use SignalUp because it is an open source software library that contains both server side and client side components, allowing us an easier way of connecting the front and the back ends. Our chat page is connected to a database hosted using Heroku, which immediately updates with every message sent, making sure that our messages stay there for when our users come back. We made the design as user friendly as possible, keeping the input window fixed, allowing for the user to scroll to pass messages and still have the option to reply. The name of the user comes from our AuthO authentication process, which allows the user to only sign in once and still have their name displayed as a username. Across our whole web app, the whole idea for the design has been to make the user have the best experience possible. And this page is no exception for that, which is why we've implemented the scroll feature so they can see their chat history, and which is why the chat windows look like they're popping out from the background, just to make it even more clear for the user. On this page, users can create an event notice by interacting with a map pin that when placed, returns a street address and postcode. This information automatically populates the postcode and address fields, and it's added onto the event description typed in by the user when they save. The created event is then displayed in a list. The map is created with the lightweight JavaScript library leaflet. The map pin returns a latitude and longitude, which is then used on an API call to OpenStreetMap to return the postcode and street address. Okay, um, so we hope you enjoyed having a look at our product. Uh, now we hope to give you a quick glimpse behind the curtain at how we made this happen and our journey over the last few weeks. Now, as you know, our deadline was extremely tight, so we had to deal with a lot of pressure. And as such, we adopted an agile working environment to progress the project in small increments. Um, our team will talk about the breakdown of tasks shortly, but our days began with regular stand-ups to help identify blocker issues and decide what should be prioritised for the day, at the end of which a retrospective would occur to identify any arising issues or successes and take stock of these accordingly. And uh, in some ways, we were quite fortunate to have only four team members uh, because this allowed us to divide evenly into pairs for pair programming. For instance, one pair could work on the map, whilst another focused on the live chat features. And uh, whilst we usually worked on the components in parallel, if uh, one pair encountered a blocker, we were always there to contact the other and check the code. So in short, we were as flexible as we were agile. Uh, we also want to draw attention to how vital it was to have fluid communication. So for instance, if one pair discovered something useful that could be abstracted to a similar component, uh, we exchange that information promptly. Also, because of our tight deadline, if we encountered an aspect of development which blocked our progress, we allowed ourselves a chance to resolve it, but we could always revert back if this remained too problematic. We called these tripwires in line with agile techniques that engage passive triggers to keep the team on track. We structured our plan into chronological epics, issues and milestones. This allowed us to see exactly what we needed to do and exactly how long we had to do it. We believe that working from a back end forward to the front end gave us more control of our front end and also stopped any unforeseen issues with the back end from arising. Similarly, we left our design process until we had completed our front end functionality. This gave us a clear design process and allowed us to know exactly what component needed to be designed and where to place it. As Rob mentioned, our plan was based around agile methodologies. This gave us room for mistakes. We constantly set tripwires and altered our plan if our goals weren't being reached. 
We used a component tree to plan out our React components. This methodology kept our app clean, clear, and easier to debug. Having a physical map to refer to also helped with planning and implementing our coding sprints. Our agile process meant that our tree evolved over time as components were added, removed, or split into smaller parts. So for our project, we decided on the following tech stuff. For the front end, we went with React because it facilitates the overall process of writing components and by using the virtual DOM, it ensures faster rendering. Also, React gave us the quick and easy way to create different pages for our app and navigate between them using React Router. For the back end, we use C Sharp because it is an object oriented language and we consider that for our app, it's efficient, easily scalable and simple to maintain. For our database, due to the nature of our data, we decided to use an SQL database. So we went for Postgres because it had all the functionality we needed. We chose Heroku for hosting our database because it takes care of data integrity with their unique continuous protection feature. For our design, we combine CSS modules with component libraries as Chakra and Bootstrap UI. With CSS modules, we are free to name our class whatever we like without fear of global scope issues. This made simple the process of refactoring our initial design because we were working at the component level so we could easily determine which styles apply to the component. Even though our design is more than 80% done using CSS modules, we thought that inserting some icons from UI libraries will make our design even better. Uh, finally, I would like to discuss our future goals and what we feel is in store for, for each. Each of us has ambitions on how we would like the app to grow over time, and we thought we would share this with you. You've seen that we have examined upload functionality through Microsoft Azure Blob. As Glenn mentioned earlier, this became a stretch goal during early development, and we are interested in expanding it to all relevant components, so a user could add images to chat and to event alike. Uh, this might lend itself better to visual information distribution and it could make the app more attractive and accessible to people. Uh, in addition, we intend to develop cross mobile functionality. Our project has been based on PC and Mac so far, so optimizing mobile app development allows ease of use for a community that's always on the go. Uh, lastly, as our app grows and matures, so too does the need to facilitate its profile. Now, since our brief does discuss strengthening the bonds of local communities, we feel strongly that interconnecting communities is intrinsic to their mutual growth. So accommodating post sharing between groups is an appropriate solution. And that is also one of our stretch goals. And this concludes our presentation. Uh, we'd just like to wrap up as a group by saying a few words. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate you watching this video. And also, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in contact. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.